When I taught a face-to-face -face class, I would bring my iPad to the class, connect it via HDMI to the overhead projector, and use the iPad plus Apple Pencil in place of the classroom's whiteboard. With Zoom and my iPad, I can recreate that synchronous environment in my online classes. What I'd like to do in this little video is to describe how I do it. What I'm going to ultimately show you utilizes my MacBook Pro. However, it works equally well on a PC. You'll also need an iPad with Apple Pencil. I've done this successfully with a 10.9 inch iPad, an 11 inch iPad, and a 12.9 inch iPad. My preference is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro because of the largest amount of real estate. You also need wireless internet. Ultimately, the iPad connects wirelessly to either the Mac or the PC, so both devices need to be on the same network. The interface that you use for the synchronous session is Zoom. It's been a while since I tried to do this with WebEx, and unless things have changed, it doesn't work with WebEx. Finally, you need a note-taking app on your iPad. I've tried more note-taking apps than you can imagine, and my favorite is Notability. The last time I checked, it cost $9.99. Another app that works reasonably well is Microsoft OneNote, which is free with the Office Suite. As I previously mentioned, the iPad and the computer are connected wirelessly. Once you've launched Zoom, you need to share your screen. If you're on a Mac, one of the screen share options is iPhone slash iPad via AirPlay. If you're on a PC, the option is just iPhone slash iPad. Again, both the computer and the iPad need to be on the same computer network. The first time that you do this, you'll be prompted to download a plugin. On the iPad, you swipe from the top right down and select screen mirroring and select the zoom option. You're now mirroring your iPad onto your computer and your zoom session. Let me show you how this works. I'm in Zoom now and I'm going to share the screen. And when I do, one of the options that comes up is iPhone slash iPad via AirPlay. I'm going to select that. And when I do, a screen comes up giving instructions on what I need to do on the iPad. On the iPad, I'm going to swipe from the top right down and select Screen Mirroring. Then I'm going to select the Zoom session. And when I do, my iPad will be mirrored to my computer. And this is what it looks like now on my computer. And now I'm back on my iPad and I'm going to select the Notability icon. I'm going to select the plus sign for a new subject up at the top and I'm going to give it a name, just test. Up at the top right I'm going to select the little icon and notice that I've got different features across the top for the different tools. I'm going to select the three dots, select paper, and select the line paper. I happen to like the line paper. I can also add pages if I want to. I'm back in the Zoom session on my computer and this is what the students see. I'm back on my iPad and I'm just going to write a little bit just to show you not only what it looks like when I'm writing on the iPad, but in a minute I'll take you back to the Zoom session and show you what it looks like on the computer. I'm back on the computer and this is what the students will see in the Zoom session. I've stopped sharing my screen and have ended the Zoom session. And one of the things that I like to do after I'm finished with the Zoom session is to share the notes to the students. To do that, up at the top left in the iPad, there's this little rectangle with an upward arrow. I select that, and then I select Email. I input my email address, and I email the notes to myself as a PDF. And once I have them, I have the notes available as a PDF to send out to my students. Some of you may be wondering how I actually recorded the interaction of my hand with the iPad. Here's a picture of my setup. I used a cheap tripod with an overhead arm from Overhead Pro. The overhead arm fits onto the screw fitting on the tripod and extends horizontally. At the end of the overhead arm is a bracket to hold my iPhone. 
Because of the weight of the iPhone, I needed something to stabilize the tripod, and for this I used a two-pound bag of dried beans. Dried rice also works well here. In situations like this, the iPhone is preferable to a DSLR because of the focus mechanism and depth of field, that is, whether you get a sharp picture or a blurred picture. I first tried doing this with a DSLR, and with autofocus, the camera had a hard time deciding where to focus. With manual focus, the iPad was clear, but my hand tended to be blurry. As always, if you have any questions at all, let me know.